Uh, welcome back to Business Insights. Now, Gospel, thanks for staying with us. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI, has urged the federal government to take measures in response to the rising inflation and its impact on households. With the latest consumer price index data released by the NBS, which indicates a continuous increase in inflation rates, LCCI recommends reducing taxes on essential food items. Augusto, do you share the LCCI stance on reducing taxes on essential food items to curb rising inflation? Well, um, LCCI represents the voice, the organized private sector voices of uh, businesses in Nigeria. Um, it's safe to say that some form of incentive has to go into the mainstream, considering the rising cost of doing business and the rising cost of living. So it's not just enough to say um, you're, you're making it easier for businesses to um, run. You also need to make it easier for consumers to patronize, to buy, you know, to facilitate that circular flow of money. There has to be a balancing out of how this incentives economy works. So I understand the position of the LCCI, and it's a good position to take, um, knowing fully well that at some point we need to you know, create relief initiatives mm. that can help stakeholders along the value chain you know, take on. Uh, because the idea is that if you relax taxation, it will also help sort of like, you know, uh, productivity help uh, uh, reduce the cost of business. Um, taking into consideration that supply chain and raw materials are now more expensive. So it just means that you're taking the cost burden for the producer, you know, somewhere else on the value chain outside supply. So technically, the assumption will be that once manufacturers or producers release their products, they can retain pricing per unit the same way they've always done and not necessarily have to increase it because supply chain has increased. I don't know if you know what I mean. So okay. that, that's the... the, the, the um, uh, perspective I have said the LCCI is coming from. However, it doesn't always happen like that, you know, because they've seen a huge lack of, you know, advocacy, lack of um, data to, to, to measure up the impact of these policy proposals, you know, on, on the doing business landscape to a very large extent, you know. So, uh, and we're also in the context where lots and lots of producers or businesses are seeking to make what we call abnormal profit. All right, you increase the price per unit of an item because um, raw materials have now been expensive or taxes have gone up. But regardless of what has gone up, you also double the price because mm -hmm. you want to be able to create enough window to have much cash flow into the business. And it's it's safe considering the volatile environment we are in right now in Nigeria. Right. But it's still not the uh, uh, expected norm. Mm -hmm. All right, so if LCCI can you know, take a step forward to you know lead some controls and regulatory processes around how these um, economics of reducing taxes to maintain profits and all that works, it's a good one. You know, mm -hmm. um, however, I would emphasize, I would expect that the government would drive these reforms from a much more holistic perspective. Yeah. All right. As we round off now, Gospel, in May, headline inflation reached 22.41%, marking the fifth consecutive monthly rise, while food inflation rose to 24.82% from the previous month of 24.61%. Yeah. With a recent fuel subsidy removal, I'm sure that the figures for June would be higher. How do we mitigate um, all of that amidst uh, the Naira floats and the new foreign exchange regime? To be honest, Jay, it's a very complicated time. We are living in very complicated times, yeah. and we are, really in, we are living in a core VUCA, VUCA reality, the volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. First off is the need for the government to envisage you need to create scenarios of what will happen, you know. So what will happen when you take this policy, when you do that, when you do that. And, and secondly, how, inco how coherent are these policies to start mm. with? You know, one of the reasons why our inflation numbers really, really got this bad was, take for the Central Bank, for instance, there were a series of incoherent policies that were destabil further destabilizing the environment. So one policy has to be to reinforce the growth and development of the polity or the business environment not you know counter not you don't want counterintuitive or counterproductive policies mm. to be in the mainstream secondly you also want to avoid unnecessarily um, um making policy announcement that, that that could turn the market behavior that could that could influence market behavior in general hours all right so uh, and that's what we saw in the, in the subsidy case and, and all of these things have to be taken into cognizance the nigerian context is now very complex and very sensitive any wrong pronouncement or a relay of inconsistent policies who hurt the economy so bad, and we get to see it in inflation and all the economic variables. So first off is the need to revise the layout of policies that must be executed 
to get Nigeria to the next level. But however, ensuring those policies are coherent, you know, such that one is enabling, not disenabling the other. Number two is to also rework the, the behavior, the language, the public speaking and all of that of public officials, all right? Do not make statements and assertions that could, could trigger market behavior, uh -huh. knowing fully well that the market is like this is an offense, all right? Mm. A lot can happen in four hours right now in the Nigerian economy. You want to avoid that. Number three is to carry all the necessary stakeholders along in full consultation. And, and that's a bit relative again, because many of the decisions Nigeria needs right now to enable reform and all that will be very hard decisions to make, which is why lots of planning and rigorous scenario planning has to go into these policy choices, these policy statements, and how you even execute them. More importantly, the timing of the execution and who is executing. Wow. So if you can begin to take cognizance of all of these dynamics as we go into uh, managing policies for reforms you know, in the new administration, yeah. um, hopefully we can get to see some form of improvement. However, I do not see inflation going down anytime soon mm. because the backlog of policies and pronouncements have been enforced where we are today. And it's going to get worse because it's not just those policies or pronouncements. It's also the fear of what, what may happen mm -hmm. as a result of what's currently happening. I don't oh. know if you get what I'm trying to say. So, um, again, arguments on round tripping, arguments on abnormal profits mm. and, and demand supply, you know, mis uh, 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 um, disequilibrium and all that will also reinforce that fear of what may happen. Panic buying is also on the table due to this subsidy conversation. Um, Unification of the exchange rate I mean, the exchange is going high. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. That fear is also enabling new waves of price increases into the market. So yeah. we, can, we can see the impact, um, not just for today, but in the future. So lots of things have to be considered mm. um, if, if we must find any, any drastic or strategic change in the scheme of these complexities. All right. Thank you so much, um, Gospel Obeli, for your time. And of course, all of the useful insight that you always share. We do appreciate them. Thank you, Jay, for having me. My pleasure. As we go on the show today, there is the need for professionals in the built environment to form strong advocacy against quackery and sharp practices. And the tide of incessant building collapses in the country must be stemmed. Now, these form part of the submission of stakeholders at the 13th edition of the Lagos Architect Forum. And this report, uh, they brought, it brought together architects and other professionals to share thoughts on the theme, the city of Lagos, what is Lagos? My name is Justin Akadonye. I'll return again tomorrow and I'll leave you with details of that report. Bye for now. Lagos is the fourth capital of Nigeria, known for its uniqueness as an economic hub, high-flying business hub, and a city that has long captivated people from all over the world. However, these architects have converged to share ideas and critical insights to effectively midwife a livable and sustainable Lagos state. We try to analyze the physical development within the city of Lagos and see how we can get government to uh, key into some of the uh, suggestions that uh, as professionals we think they should uh, key into. When we talk of the thriving city in the world. These are cities that never sleep. What it is all about is to synergize, to interact with the private sector, the public sector. Lagos is the fourth capital of Nigeria, known for its uniqueness as an economic hub, high-flying business hub, and a city that has long captivated people from all over the world. However, these architects have converged to share ideas and critical insights to effectively midwife a livable and sustainable Lagos state. We try to analyze the physical development within the city of Lagos and see how we can get government to uh, key into some of the uh, suggestions that uh, as professionals we think they should uh, key into. When we talk of the thriving city in the world. These are cities that never sleep. What it is all about is to synergize, to interact with the private sector, the public sector, the manufacturers, the suppliers of building uh, materials. In recent times, incidences of building collapses have become recurring, even with a city as commercial as Lagos. 
As one wonders how this tide can be stemmed, government is advised to ensure monitoring as enforcement does not stop when approval is given. The professionals believe that state government should domesticate the national building code as well as show political will to stop the menace. The building code actually has some compliance forms built into uh, the document such that at various stages of the development of the building of the, uh, of the building, you have relevant professionals signing off at different stages. Are we shying away from our responsibilities? Are we ready to take up our responsibilities? And to be honest with you, please be ready for more collapses. Because if we are not ready to do the right thing, then be sure that these uh, 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 tragedies will continue to occur. Until we can have a proper governance structure on the construction process, where we start to track who design, who supervises, what are the stages of construction, what are the stages of certification, and it's available on a digital platform. This is why this is Lagos. The NIA shows that it will continue in its advocacy role as watchdogs to promote best practices in the building procurement process to avert ugly consequences of building failures and collapses.